This is oh. weird. Fact. Are we, Are we, there? There? <laughs> <laughs> we got a little lost looking at the comments there, and I was, you know, just clipping away here. So we... what are you clipping away at? <laughs> what are you doing? Are you? So I'm, I'm, I'm going to show a little hack on the Kimber Bear when we get to the end, the actual little stuffy. But right now, I'm just going to. So this guy, the full size away. guy. Hi, Boop. Good boop. morning, everybody. So we'll show that later. Okay. Give a little, little shake over here. Put that to the side for now, okay? <laughs> so we're pretending that it's like the show hasn't quite started yet. Hi, <laughs> I'm Teresa Coates. Um, I have a lint roller too, and you do too, I'm sure. Um, so I'm Teresa Coates. I'm the national educator for Shannon Fabric. Sorry you caught us. Um, not quite ready to go. So <laughs> we were ready, and then I decided, oh, I want to try one more thing before we do this. So anyway, we're here today. We are talking about the Kimber Bear, uh, the Cuddle Buddies kits is what we're talking about. And we have one of them that we're going to show you how to do it sewing style. Okay, so this is what the kit that we're going to be talking about today. We've got a bunch of information I want to share with you about it because uh, it's a fun little kit. There are two versions of it. So we are doing the Kimber Bear today. There is also a Felix the Fox. And uh, we did a tutorial with that one a while ago. So um, before we get too far, let's do the giveaway. So if you are new here, please give us a wave. You can share the video. And if you share it, you'll be entered to win a kit at the end of it. So um, And I think this time we normally give away a beginner box, but I think this time we're going to give away this kit that oh. we're talking about right here. I know we have a couple of them in inventory, so nice. we'll, we can do that. Very cool. Good, good. It's a great kit. I absolutely love it. So we do this every week that you will give away um, a couple of kits. So we give one away on Facebook, one away on YouTube. You just have to share the video. We're really thrilled when you do and you can get new viewers and new people who love cuddle fabric. So if you are new um, to working with cuddle, this will be a good one too, because we're going to talk about a lot of basics. So anyway, if you win, what will you win, Hawk? You'll win. You'll get this Sew Together Tuesday tote with the Cuddle Buddies kit inside, not the kit that's in there now. And then you get this cool mug. Ta-da. Ta-da. Ta okay. Right. So go ahead and share the video. Tell your friends all about it. And um, and then bookmark the video for when you get the kit and you want to work through it. So maybe you already have the kit. It is. It came out maybe about a year ago or so, I think. Um, so it is in stores now. So you can find it at lots of quilt shops, like lots and lots of quilt shops have it. I will tell you the one thing that's a little bit, um, oh, I don't even know what the right word is, is that this kit looks just like all of the other kits. So there's <laughs> nothing like that you're going to see it and be like, oh, that, I have to make that. You have to look at the back of it. Well, I mean, so it does, it does up actually. Up at the top, yes. You have to look for that. Right. So that's yeah. what I'm telling you is look for that. Okay. God, all the boxes are the same color and they're all the same size. Right. Basically. Exactly. So you're not going to necessarily, when you walk into the quilt shop, you're not going to see it and be like, oh yeah, that's it. You have to look for the cuddle buddies thing. And that's what that is. Cause it will make a blanket and the little toy. So like I said, there's a Felix the Fox and then there's the bear, the Kimber bear. I will tell you the Felix the Fox. We did it. Uh, we did the machine embroidery version of that tutorial last year in a cornfield. Um, <laughs> That's right in Hayward. In Hayward, Minnesota, for Cali um, Calico Quilt Shop. Calico Hutch. Calico Hutch. Sorry. There we go. Calico Hutch. Sorry, guys. Calico Hutch up in Hayward, Minnesota, and uh, just outside of Austin. We were just talking about it, and uh, it's a great shop. And we did the tutorial in a cornfield there for the fox. So if you're interested in doing the embroidery version, you can watch that one. So it's one of the cool things about this kit is that it actually has a sewing version and an embroidery version. So we collaborated with Kimberbell and they designed uh, the applique, the cute little design that's on there, that's their design. And they have the embroidery files for it. If you have an embroidery machine, I definitely recommend you do it. I'll show you a sample later, the two different versions. Super easy, it's adorable and um totally fun but if you don't have an embroidery machine you can absolutely do it and that's why we wanted to do today's tutorial because not everyone has an embroidery machine so you can absolutely do this by sewing machine and that's what we're going to do today i'm going to talk about differences okay yeah all hey, right Does hey, that Peggy, all make sense? i hear you you're a little afraid to sew the animals <sighs> she has a great <laughs> a great hack <laughs> I for show showing you. this this bear <laughs> this in particular. particular. So I stick love around. stuffed animals, so don't don't be too afraid of them. And I will tell you, there's more there's more videos, and we'll 
tell you more about them as we go. But we're just going to actually get into this kit. So I had another kit that I worked through a bunch of it. We're going to open this kit and we're going to talk through it. Okay, because it's really important. So, and then we'll go into the ingredients. So starting with an unboxing. Well, should we do the ingredients first? Let's no. do the ingredients first. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's do the ingredients because you're going to buy this kit. And then you're going to need all of these things too. So you're going to need to make sure that you've got a 9014 stretch needle, polyester sewing thread. I use a Mettler Metro scene. We'll talk about specific colors today, weirdly. Um, you want a marking pen, the stiletto, of course, that I love, flower head pins. The clover ones are the best for cuddle. Micro serrated scissors. I'll be using Karen K. Buckley's today. Basting spray from OD505, the water soluble stabilizer. Uh, embroidery floss. Sorry, I'm having a hard time reading. It's far away. Hand sewing needle. I'm using the tulip, but we'll talk about that too. Okay, and then you're going to want polyester batting if you want that in your quilt. You'll want uh, peel and stick paper from Kimberbell or um, SF101 from Helen and some water soluble stabilizer. And somehow I didn't get that on there. It's on there. So, is it? Yep. Water right soluble? The, yeah, right under the basting spray. Right there. Oh, okay. Oh, I did say it. Okay, good. You did. Whew. Oh, thanks guys. It's really, it's hard to see that that far away. So those are all the things you're going to need to get as well as the Cuddle Buddies kit. So let's do, um, let's do a little unboxing of the kit. Okay. So the kit comes like this. Like I said, it is Cuddle Buddies and that's what you're going to look for. There's two variations on it um, right now. I don't know if we'll do more, but these work really well. So one of the things about this kit that is a, can be a little bit confusing for people is that there's pieces to make two different projects. We have a couple of kits like this. The other one is the uh, the play mat one, the keep on swimming. Yeah. I think that's what it's called. Yes. Um, Where there's a round play mat and then it has. There's a play mat, a blanket, and a stuffy in that. So some of, the, some of these kits that have like a couple of things in there, it can be a little bit confusing when you open it up. So we kind of want to do a little unboxing to show you how that works because the kits have everything you need, but you can definitely mess it up if you're not careful. Okay. So one of the things about this kit is it comes with two fabrics that you can use for the bottom panel. Oh, now that I took it apart, you can't really see. Yeah. So at the bottom on the, on the box, it showed pink at the bottom. You can also do blue. So they have both colors are in here. Okay. Little secret is there's actually enough of the fabric to do the applique on both. So that's kind of cool. Um, so if you were, you know, waiting for a grandchild to be born, you could absolutely do both of them wait for the birth announcement and be like, all right, we need the boy one, sew it on. Okay, so you could actually do both. So it has those. And then we've got a big chunk of fabric. This is width of fabric. So I will tell you in these kits that are a 30 inch wide blanket, when you find the width of fabric piece, that's your binding. Okay, so that's really important. I can't tell you how many times in classes we've had it happen where people are like, oh, that's too long. And then they just cut it in half. But what that really is, is your binding so that you have some nice long binding pieces. Okay. So we're going to tuck that away. I'm literally just going to stick stuff over at the side that I don't want to deal with right now. Because that's the way I work. If I, I need to put stuff like out of sight, <laughs> because otherwise I'll be like, oh, that was the piece I needed. <laughs> Wrong piece. Okay. And then you have this piece, which is your top of the blanket. Okay. So we're going to set that aside right now because we don't need oh, that can either. You, can you hold it up for just a second? Because this oh, is sure. ridiculous ridiculously cute fabric. it's super cute so you can see like the the kimber bear in the middle of the one is that's the typical one where he's kind of laying out flat and then we've got all these other little bears that are in different like seated positions super cute and designed specifically got for it. the kimber bear all right so that'll be more for quilt making which we're welcome not doing yet. kylie from australia i'm sorry it's 3 a.m and yeah. thanks for watching <laughs> but thanks for the insomnia i'm glad you're here <laughs> yeah join the All insomnia right. brigade okay so then we have a big hunk of this fabric okay and it is a long piece i don't know how long it is i'm sure it says in here but it's like basically it's half the width of the fabric so it's the, this is with the fabric and it's 30 inches okay so this is length of fabric. Got it. So it's very long, a skinny piece. Did you have one selvage on there? Is yes. that right? One yeah. selvage and one cut. You have one selvage and one is cut down the middle of the yardage. All right. What else is in here? Take a look. You've got some stuff here at the bottom. I will tell you, if you're not careful, you're going to use this wrong. So <laughs> that's why we're here today. So we have a little pink piece. We're going to use this for the heart on the Kimber Bear doll. We have a piece of dark brown that is going to be used for the Kimber Bear doll. OK, 
Okay. There we go. There's his nose. And then <laughs> the heart is down here. So got heart, it. heart and nose. I will tell you the first time that I did this, I pulled it out and I used the dark brown for the muzzle on the little applique and it is not cute. <laughs> okay. So I was like really disappointed that I, I was like, it's not as cute as I remember it being. I don't understand. And then I went and looked at the picture and I realized that this is for the Kimber Bear and not the applique. So I'm also going to set this aside because this is not for this project. Okay. Again, a thing. There's really, it's kind of a three-parter in that there's the applique, the bear, and then the applique goes onto the blanket. Here is the piece that we need for our applique. All right. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put these back in here. Oh, I was going to show you too. And then it comes here. In a bunch of the kits now, you'll get this cute little label. Okay. A little label that says that it was made with our fabric, how to wash it, all that good stuff. Very right. important. No fabric softener. No fabric softeners. So don't lose that. Keep it till the end. Then you're going to have some instructions on how to put the kit together. These are the three things that you really need to make sure that you don't lose out of it. Okay, so this is your cutting instruction, which is important. And we're going to need to go through that. And then we're going to have instructions for making the blanket and for the bear. So this was for the bear, and I'm going to set it aside. I'm going to put that over here because this is my bear stuff. All right. And I'm going to keep the blanket stuff, and I'm going to keep my cutting instructions. Can I have you put that over there, too? Yes, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. So now we've got this stuff. All right. So I want to, I'm not going to do it right here for you guys right now, but what I would do, which I did before, is follow these cutting instructions, especially to here. Okay. So you're going to want to cut a quilt back and you're going to want to cut a band. All right. So this is really important that you cut this because if you just slap it on here, it's totally not the right size. All right. So we want to make sure that we're doing that the right size. Let me show you really quick. So what that does is I already cut up my binding out of the other kit. I've got my piece on here and I've got my back. All right. So we can talk more about how this goes together um, later. You see what's going on down there and then the other side. There. Well, it's, it's not no. complete. Oh, why and there's not? the other band. Okay. So you have all those pieces. You're just going to put them aside. So if you are, if you're making this kit, I really highly suggest that you cut this fabric and then you're going to put the backing over here and the strip over here, and then you're going to put all the bare stuff over here and just leave that for later, all right? Because we really want to work through it separately because it can get confusing, all right? So today we're doing the bear. Oh, I need one of the, I need one of these guys because we're going to applique it on. Should we do blue or pink? Um, I think that we should do blue because I know you have another example of blue we're going to use towards oh, the end, that's right? that's totally so true. There, there's some continuity. But okay. That's just, or you could do it opposite. I already, I already did it on the pink once to try it, so we could do it on the blue now. Okay. Try. I've done both. I do. I do this, you guys. I try it lots of different ways so we could figure it out. Okay, so I've done it a few times. All right, so first I'm going to get this guy heated up, and we're going to talk through the other part. Okay, so I'm going to turn that up. So... On, I have two copies and I'm going to get rid of one because that will get confusing. So here's my book. I've got my piece that I'm going to use. I'm going to start with the book and it's going to have, it has a whole bunch of instructions in there, what you need, blah, 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 how to put the blanket together. On the back, it has the uh, templates. And this is what we need to use today to create the template to put onto here. So when you do this with machine embroidery, you're going to stitch it down and then trim around it. When we're doing it with sewing applique then we're going to actually trace the image put it on here cut it out so it's a little bit a little different um, order so this is the sf 101 that i used all right and all you're going to do is trace that there are two templates here one is for the actual the outline of it and this is for the reversed image of it this is what we want to trace onto the sf 101 okay so the reason we're going to do that is because we're going to iron this onto the back of the cuddle, and then it's going to be this direction. Then it would actually match here. Does that, that make sense? That seems really important. Okay. <laughs> really important. I will tell you. I'll show you a sample later that when you do it backwards, it doesn't look as cute by any stretch of the imagination. So there's also another product that is similar to this. I couldn't find any, but it's a Kimberbell product that's called um, Peel and Stick. 
And so you would iron your fabric onto here. You would trace it, iron your fabric onto here, and then it's sticky. So you iron it onto paper, or it's ironed onto the fusible that is also has paper. Okay, so that one actually has sticky on this side and fusible on this side. Does that make sense? Got it. Okay, so but, if there's a but, question. But that let me is know. not that does not come in the kit. And you does not come in the kit. It, you would need to buy that separately. Exactly. So if you have you have it or you have a Kimberbell Kimberbell dealer near you, you could probably find it. I didn't find it, and I really love using SF101 for my stuff. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, you want to use a, wa a water soluble or air erasable pen. I've got the Clover water uh, soluble water erasable. Marker today. That's what I'm going to be using for um, some of this. We're going to go through and talk about different markers. Don't use a heat soluble pen like a friction pen because when you iron this onto the fabric, it's just going to go away. Okay. So I've got my square fabric, however big this is. As you can see, I can fit two of them on there. All right. The big thing you want to make sure that you do is actually pet it and make sure that your bear is on there the right way. Ask me how I know. Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, Karen, we're not actually demoing the stuffy today. We are demoing the applique for the blanket, just to clarify. And it, but it we is, do, we already have a tutorial. Size. We yes. do, actually, that does bring up a good point, though. We already we have a tutorial have for a, the Kimber Bear. <laughs> a three day tutorial back from what, 2020? Like three years ago. Three years yeah. ago. Yeah. About doing, about sewing this cute little Kimber Bear. And I walk you through all of it. Every step. It's a great, that's a great video series, those yep. three episodes. So there is one for that already. So this one is actually for the accompanying blanket part. Right. We will talk a little bit more about the bear at the end, though. Okay, so I'm just pressing this on. So I did trace too much because I started tracing this and I realized I don't need that. So this is the whole outline of the bear and the muzzle is what I what you need to trace. All right, so that's there. I'm going to let that this cool. Is the, this is the back. Got it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep, because I turned it over, I petted it, made sure it goes the right direction, put the bear on that direction. All right. So the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to trace this little guy because I need to trace around it. So I am going to show you a little bit different than the actual pattern does because that's what I do. And uh, I could do it a little bit differently. Real quick, uh, did you mention what temperature the uh, iron was set on? It's just a medium setting as what it's. Got it. And that is the I cute little travel medium, iron by Aliso, which we love. Yeah, I really do love it. Okay. So before I forget, these are, I think they're still on sale through the end of the month. I think oh, which yeah. is tomorrow. And that's, uh, that's Bianca's. So that's BiancaSpringer.com. You can get your pack of pattern weights. We're using them today. And one of the pattern weights out of eight will be that. Yep. <laughs> We're going to see if I can get this to show up. I really wanted my red pen, and it seems to have disappeared. Let me use the purple to see if that'll work out better. I did the blue the other day, and it doesn't work out quite as well. There we go. It's a little bit darker. So this one is a friction pen. It's the fine liner. And it's okay to use here because this isn't going to get set with any heat, so I can't disappear it, which is good. I'm not sure that that's really a word is disappeared or the right English, but okay. And so I'm going to trace around all of these little pieces. And these are going to be my stitching lines for later. So you do want to make sure that you get everything and get them fairly close. It doesn't have to be perfect. However, it's funny, it doesn't take a whole lot of difference before the face ends up looking looking a little goofy. <laughs> it does. So, yeah, I'll show you guys a little sample of how I, I tried to cheat a little bit extra. And, yeah, you have to be kind of careful. What was, the, what was the name of Bianca's company for the pattern weights again? It is again? Thanks I Made Them. We did not get a banner made for those. Sorry. Normally, we would run that information across we the had, bottom of the screen. We had it from last time. We have BiancaSpringer.com. Yeah, but I delete the banners in between oh, shows. Sorry. So, no. There's we no, don't. There, we don't. Okay. There we go. Sorry, Bianca. But, yeah, there's um, they're there for a few more days, I think. 
So with this, I like I said, I'm tracing it with the friction pen. I will say it's hard to trace upside down. Also, do not do this with the Sharpie. So, oh, I, I forgot to tell you, if you go to uh, shannonfabrics.com slash blog, you'll be able to get the show notes. And in there, we talk about the pens. And using a Sharpie is a bad idea because this ink stays on the plastic here as you stitch it. And then it kind of gets pushed into your fabric and you can see all the little black lines. So one of the things about it being a water soluble stabilizer will tear it up and it'll, it'll come out. But if you don't get the little pieces out, you're totally going to see those little black lines. There's like little black bits everywhere. So we don't want to do that. It's just easier. And plus it's a really wide line to try to like head down the middle of. So if I use the fine liner, it actually works really well for this because I need to trace right on, or need to stitch right on those lines. Got it. Okay? So the SF 101, you use the thick, the thick pen. Yes. Over, and on this one, you use the fine point. Yep. And then I just moved it and I saw, oh, I'm missing part of his face. So I got to gotta do the rest of his face. So that's kind of the nice thing is you can just slide it back and check. So and I'm like, okay, I think I got all the pieces. All right. All right. So I'm going to set that aside because I'm not going to need it right away. But this is now cooled down so I can go ahead and cut it out. So we talked about in the show notes. So like I said, you can download from the blog. I mentioned in there to get very sharp scissors. And I really do mean that you're gonna need some really sharp micro serrated scissors to do this because you're gonna trace the, or you're cutting out these little shapes that the micro serrated scissors help a lot to grab the fabric. And you're also gonna to wanna to be able to get all the way into the corners without it being an issue because your scissors won't snip to the corner. Which if you've had that happen is super frustrating. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to cut around this guy. i do it kind of quick. Not too quick, though. And you'll definitely need to do this with scissors and not with a rotary cut or anything like that. So go to slide your way around here. Okay, you'll see the nap, how it does this funny thing, because it's really just cut the backing and pushed out of my way. You'll notice it'll do this the whole time around in different places, and we'll kind of go back and trim things up. Oh, you, we're... we're... The fuzz just kind of hangs off the end of the mm -hmm. foot. Okay, got it. See how it's coming off there? Because it's pushed out of the way while I'm cutting it. So you can definitely like cut too much and cut too little. We'll come back and do some trimming and show you. Okay, so again, I cut out or I traced out too much. You don't need to trace out the face on this one. It's actually just the outline of the body. So I found that these scissors work very well for this because they have a very nice sharp point. They're very comfortable in your hands. So as you cut around here, it's not going to hurt your hand or get my finger stuck. Sometimes that, I'm sure you've seen that happen, Hawk. <laughs> get my thumb kind of stuck in the scissors. I got to work my way out. Well, well show us those handles, scissors. actually. Because the handles are sack. super nice. They're really and big they're, and But squishy. they're squishy. Right, and those so are the carrying key buckleys. Mm -hmm. Those are great. Those are pretty easy to find in craft sewing stores too. Yes, exactly. They're really easy to find these days. So, they're um, I just got a new pair the other day specifically for this project. They run, I think, around thirty dollars. Which I will say, the first time I bought a pair, I was like thirty dollars for a pair of little scissors. Are you kidding me? So I, <laughs> I do feel, and then I cut with them, and I was like, oh, I see. <laughs> So they really are, they're really lovely little scissors. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just flick this guy. Get as much of that nap off as I can. So now when I come back around, if you want to look at that, you can see like there's some little funny areas. So this will happen where it kind of cut out into it the way that I cut. So the only way to do this is to be extra, extra careful and not you know, try to trim fast at all. Oh, but, that's interesting. You I see see that? Because the, the because the way that it was were sitting at an angle, you actually ended up giving give it a, a little bit of a haircut right, right there. And then on the at, on the same, we've got where it hangs off the edge in certain areas too. Got it. Okay? So around his foot here, I am going to give him a little little trim. Okay, and mostly that's because when we stitch this on, we're going to do a small stitch, and if I can't see that edge very well, I'm not going to catch it. So I'm trying to give myself a really nice sharp edge to be able to follow. All right. Okay, so I can see on here too. If you look in, look in here real quick. I'm sorry, you busted out, and I was like, so in here I can see there's like some little air bubbles. 
which if I were using this for garment sewing, like for a collar or something like that, that would be a problem. I will say that when you're using it for this, if it's not perfectly on there, it's fine. Like don't, don't panic if your uh, SF-101 doesn't stick completely. It's really not a big deal for what we're using it for because we're just adding some stability to the, um, to the fabric itself. And we don't want to overheat it by leaving the iron on it for a really long time to get it to like really, really set. That's not as important as just getting it there until we're here. Okay, so now if you were using the Kimberbell peel and stick or you're using this one, you would be at the same level. If you were using the peel and stick, you'd peel out the back and smack it on. All right, we're using Odif today and smacking it on. Okay, in the pattern, we said we're gonna use blue. In the pattern, I believe she tells you, they tell you how to, how far to put it over. So you're gonna lay it out and you're gonna measure in 10 inches. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna measure in 10 inches from the side and put it there. Truthfully, you can put it wherever you want to. You could center it. You could put it on the right, on the left. It does not matter in any way, shape or form. All right, so don't get too picky about that one. The only thing we definitely wanna do is get it so that it's pretty straight up and down. So here's my 10 inches and 10 inches. So I'm gonna stick a pin in here so I can kind of see where that's gonna be. And then there is a fold line in here and I can still see that. So I know where that's, that's my center. So it needs to go about there. Oh, you know what I didn't do you guys? I just realized. I didn't cut out the little arm thing. Dang it, I did this last time too. What little arm? This little guy right here. His little armhole. Oh. Uh, do you see it? Oh, I do see it. I will say I have skipped it a couple times and it's not that big of a deal. So if you feel like skipping it, do. See, we knew I'd forget something, right? How's that work? Pretty darn good. Okay. And we're back. And we're back. So this, I'm just going to kind of cut in the middle. Oh, sorry. And just cut down. Cut that little piece right out. And really, the biggest thing that this does is just gives his arm a little bit of a more of a shape. Again, not, not critical, as I get super picky about how close it is. Okay, so this is the same thing where I can see a bunch of the fuzz coming through. So I'm gonna give them a little bit of a haircut from this side. Mostly because I want that arm to show. If I cut it, we're gonna get that baby to show. Put a little of the backing, the, the, this. To yeah, through. to pop through. Okay. Okay. All right, so now, now my bear looks right. Whew. Okay, so I've got a little piece of muslin that I'm going to use to spray based on. We're going to spray the back of it. I've got my OD505 spray. It's got a brand new can of that because oh, I've got to keep that lid on there. Okay, watch out. I don't want to spray you. <laughs> okay. So look at how great that is. The, uh, the other can that I was using is, was definitely like starting to not have very much, which means it was spraying pretty in, inconsistently. So sometimes it was a lot and sometimes it wasn't very much. I had to overspray it. Okay, so now we're going to get him on here. Basically, so he's kind of going up and down. It has this jaunty little, jaunty little look going. Okay, there we go. Done. No, just kidding. Okay. <laughs> So now in the pattern, they tell you to go ahead and um, stitch out the whole thing and then put the muzzle on and then stitch out the whole thing again. And I'm too lazy to do that. So we're going to just stick the muzzle on now and hope for the best. And by um, hope for the best, you've done it this way and it works. It totally works. Okay, good. That's it totally works. It really is. You just don't get it in the absolute perfect placement. But for me, Stitching around it twice was more than I wanted to do. I'm not going to throw that away because there's a whole, there's enough for a whole other bear. You see that? Okay. So also, I would tell you is that you should practice it once beforehand, before you're going to put it on the bear or before you're going to put it on the blanket. Try it in some cuddle three that you have, just another color 
Um, I did that when I was trying it with the the fox, and it was actually really helpful to make like three or four of them. You don't you can really only make it once, and you'll be fine. But if you try it once beforehand, you'll be able to figure out which stitches um, work with your machine best. So I always tell people in class that the first one's practice, and I really do mean it. Okay, so now here's his muzzle. I have a question. Yes, I've that, got an answer. I don't have a question. Uh, um, who has a question? Carol has a question. <laughs> Carol, Hi, Carol has a question. Um, could, is there any way that she could use her scan and cut at this point? Um, you'd have to. You'd have to do it all yourself. Like, I mean, you could absolutely have your machine do it, but you would have to actually design it in your in your program or whatever it is that is used right yes. I mean, I, the, I, the machine will cut it for sure if you have a fabric thing it'll cut up to three millimeters which is what this is so you could do it you just have to import the design and create a cut file and then transfer it to the thing you could yeah. probably convert the the embroidery file that you have to buy from kimberbell if you're going to do use the embroidery machine to do this if you're gonna you yeah could probably grab the paths and move them over to the cutting i machine. don't know how that program works at all so yes <laughs> Yes, I'm and sure I'm that you could. I'm stuff up. I'm sure you could get an SG, SVG file for it, or you could create one for yourself. But yeah, otherwise it is just you know hand cutting it. But I'm sure if you know your machine very well, you could figure that out. No, okay. She says she's just getting started too. So okay, you, you can Me muddle too. through with the and, Me too. and post post it if you get yeah. it figured out. <laughs> if you figure it out, Cuddle. please do. So yes, I know that those things are possible. I have a scan and cut that I am slowly learning. Um, there's a lot to it. Like every time you learn a new or get a new machine, you're like, all right, let me learn some more. So I want to show you before we move on from here. So I put the muzzle on. I figured out where it went by using my little template here. I put this on here. I was like, okay, his muzzle is supposed to go here. I can see the purple. I don't know if you guys can see it very well. I can see it a little bit, so I can see his nose is there. Now, when I take his nose off, it'll be in the wrong place again when I put it back on. So I just traced around it with my stiletto. And now I have a little spot for it. Oh, it just kind of disrupts the nap. It does. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the backing off of this. Because you can see that when I put this down, see if you can come in kind of from the side. And you can see the white on it. Do you see that? I do see that. So what I do is I just take the SF-101 off of that. So that was good for the cutting. But... It's great for the cutting because then I have a shape, which is awesome, which is what I, you know, I need it for. But I don't need it to show up now. I need it to hide in there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to spray base the back of that. Turn my iron off too. Okay. Chasing it around. Okay. Make sure that my nap is in the right direction. I'm going to go ahead and stick that on. Okay, so now it's all in the place that I want it to. All right, so that, this little fuzzy point of, you know, tracing around that and taking off the SF-101, it really is just to make it look better. I like the way that it looks better without the SF-101. Behind it, there's enough stitching and the fuzz is going to come around, but I noticed that on the top I could see it just a little bit. So we want to protect against that. All right, so now we are here, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this on, and you can go ahead and you could tape this on or pin it on. We're going to try pinning it because I know a lot of people who do that. Because I will say that hold it, trying to hold it in place didn't work quite as well as I wanted it to. Sometimes it doesn't. Okay. So we're going to get this on here. And now, once we've got it in place, now I'm just going to stitch around this. So when you're doing this on the embroidery machine, let's bring out the embroidery sample now. So when you're doing this on the embroidery machine, it does this fancy little stitch. And I tried really hard to figure out a stitch that I could do that would be like this and kind of smash down the edge like this because I really do like the look of it. I will tell you, I couldn't figure it out. So I tried a few different things. I didn't like the way that it looked. It just ends up being too smashy. I think there's one of them that I have here that I'll show you in a bit. That is, um, I tried it with a couple of different stitches and it just couldn't work. So we're just going to stick with a zigzag. All right, I'm just going to stick with a zigzag today. 
and um, I'm going to do a smaller zigzag. So normally when we're working with cuddle and we're doing applique, a lot of times I'll do a little bit bigger zigzag. Sometimes it's like three and a half. Today we're going to do a two and a half. We're going to go real small with this one. We're just going to catch that edge and make it nice and flat. Okay. So let's go ahead and switch the machine over. So um, I'm using the Baby Lock Chorus and I'm going to switch it over to a zigzag and mine does its own automated thing. It's, I think it's just the regular default. Okay, so we're going to do two and a half and two and a half. I would suggest that you have a practice one and you try it out first and see which works best. We also have the um, Mettler thread and I had the number on there, 387 is the one. If you get the show notes, there are three fabric or three thread colors that work really well with this little bear that all kind of match. So if you can find any of those at your local quilt shop, which a lot of quilt shops now have it, you'll be, you'll be fine. So I can tell you there's one thing. Do we have any questions I need to answer yet? No, we're okay. Sorry. Okay. So one of the things when I was doing this, when I was practicing it and trying to figure it out is that Part of me really wanted to do things like stitch this underarm seam here first and then stitch over the top so that I could catch the zigzags. We're going to try that. I've stitched it a couple of different ways and it doesn't really matter. What I was trying to do is like stitch the background first and then come up. Does that make sense? But like I decided it wasn't really worth it, even though I'm going to show you how to do that now. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to catch it so that when it comes off one side, it's going to be on the fabric and one side right off the fabric. So there's no way to do this where it actually um, just catch it. You can do it all in one fell swoop. You're definitely going to overlap and cut your thread because unless there were, oh, that's not it. That's too big. Sorry. Oh, okay. I said two and a half, but that's not what I did. Okay, hold up. <laughs> I wrote something down wrong. Wait, is that is that what I did? 1.5 and 1. See, we had a long weekend. <clears throat> and <laughs> <laughs> so so this this part was a couple of days ago. This, what you're this part was on Friday. Yeah, maybe Thursday. So I'm gonna take these stitches out just because I want to. Um I'm gonna redo it. Okay, let's get that stitch length right. So let me get my little scrap of fabric here. I'm gonna do the thing I just told you to do, practice. That seems better. Okay. So this is what I did. So at the first here, it's two by two, and then it's 1.8. And I think I'm going to do the 1.8 um, and get it just a little bit tighter. I might even go down just a little bit more. I'm going to move it down just one more. Okay. okay. So it's it's still wider, but it is shorter. So the, the zig zag is not, it's going to be closer together, closer to like a satin stitch, but we just don't want to do a satin stitch. Really, my, my thing with the satin stitch is it's nothing personal. It just takes forever. That's better. All right, so now I'm going to go back over here. Do a little lock stitch. And cut my thread. What would it be oh, like that to use, better. What would it be Not like to use a free motion stitch to do this? Uh, if you're good at it, you could do it. I cannot do a free motion stitch to save my life. Okay. So this is a, that's an experience question and if you're asking that means you might have that yeah, you might I have some experience doing that. Yeah, I definitely don't have that much control over my, you know, my stitching. So as we go around here, we're just going to follow the edge of it. So we're going to go over between the legs, like between the leg and the body. We're going to catch that. So really, technically, I'm already like, dang it, I should have done the legs first. It really doesn't make much difference at all. At some point, you're going to have to backtrack, no matter what. Yep. yep, yep, exactly. So I did try, um, so we're talking about this. So I did try a few different zigzags. I like a little bit smaller one. I didn't like a too tiny one. I tried to do some different, like, decorative stitches. 
And what happens is you have these tiny little curves right here, right? So even this is like, okay, maybe I should have made it a little smaller because to get around this curve, I have to kind of, you know, stop often, twist it and keep going. One of the nice things about using the sol water soluble stable stabilizer over the top of it with the lines is that you know where to stitch. I can see where I'm at. If I come off of it, it's okay. Just a little bit, fine. It's not positioned perfectly. But I can actually see that edge and keep a really nice, good edge on the applique where I'm just kind of coming off of it. So basically, you know, like I said, one side is on it and one side comes just off. And I'm going to do things like go around the arms. We'll do that. All right. And I did try to do a blanket stitch. And I will say that wasn't fun either. So that one is just, it's too many, it's too many curves. So I found the zigzag was okay to do the curve on. The straight stitch looks a little, I don't know. I wasn't happy with it because it was hard to keep it nice because you're having to do so many little shifts like this that every time I lifted the foot and it shifted, you could see it. And that annoyed me. So. Yeah. Hey, I just want to shout out to all the brand ambassadors that I see in the comments right now, handling business. Really appreciate it. That would obviously be Jackie, um, who is our consistent YouTube moderator for the comments mm -hmm. over there. But I see Rin and I see you, Mary, you guys are jumping in and answering questions. Great. Thank, Thank you. you for the help. For sure. And most of them, probably all of them that are talking today have done it. So a bunch of our BAs did a bunch of these for uh, samples. So we sell samples. We make samples available to stores. I see you, Michelle. To use. And it's really helpful to have their insight on this. So let's switch it because we can. Let's switch it to a different um, stitch and we'll see something. So on, where's my other sample? Where's the blue one? Here it is. Okay. So let's look on here. So this little stitch is almost kind of like a little asterisk stitch. It's so teeny tiny. I don't even know how I could possibly make something like that. But let's see. So I think that I tried this one and it was terrible. Let's try that one. Okay. We'll just try things because this is going to go in a blanket. It seems monstrous, by the way. You, the size on that is five by two and a half. Well, let's do it little. But How's that? I mean, what do I know? I don't know either. <laughs> I haven't tried it. Let's try. We're just going to try it right on the bear, even though I'm like, this isn't the way I would do it. Okay, so this is why I really don't like decorative stitchers. It takes forever. Except that it kind of, it's kind of giving you some, I don't know, making you consider it. <laughs> yes, it does. It makes you slow down for sure. As you sew around this, you're like, okay, I have to go a little slower. So this one isn't too bad. I'm kind of happy with this one. The one I, there were a couple I chose the other day and they just took forever. We'll try the blanket stitch too, the quilting applique stitch. That's the one we actually use the most. Okay, so now I'm like at a weird point where I'm, like, I'm not quite sure how to turn this corner, but we're gonna try. Because it's hard to tell where the stitches are gonna go next. We're just gonna try. <laughs> see what happens, okay. Which stitch is this, Hawk? Can you read it? Can you see what it says up at the top? Uh, it, it is a, a faggoting cross stitch. Got it. That's the one I actually like a lot. That's why I found it, unfortunately. Yeah, so usually this is used to um, kind of provide like a gap in uh, embroidery. Like when you're doing, I used this stitch when I was making a uh, christening gown for my daughter. So it's usually done in like, what do you call that? That kind of work, heirloom sewing. Here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna do a lock stitch again. Let's see how that looks. Not too terrible, not too terrible. We'll take off the plastic and see how it looks when I'm done. So that might be one that I'm recommending. Can you show that again, show that stitch again? So there's, so here's the sizes that I used. I'm gonna up this just so you guys can see that's what the stitch looks like, okay? So go look at it up there. It's that stitch. Got it. So now stay there. So this is what it looked like when I was stitching it. So that's why it was really hard. That's why I wanted to make it bigger. 
Because when you go look at your machine, you're never going to find something that looks just like that. <laughs> Got it. Okay. So then I wanted to try the applique one. So this one we do, I'm going to make this a little bit wider so it'll catch a little more. We'll do two and we'll do 1.8 on that. Let's do the let's do the head this way. I kind of like it when I get these like Frankenstein things. I'm like, let's try everything in one project. It really just means that you don't have to, or you might want to because it works really well. So this I found a lot of times I have to really slow myself down because what I want to do is turn. When it comes over here, it needs to go straight back to where it was, and I want to just be able to turn, and I can't. I keep going around here. So you just kind of blew past the ear? I did because I'll have to go back got because it. you can't you have to you have to get this line across. Yeah, I got so it. So you have to choose are you gonna go straight around or are you gonna go here, around, and then come back and do that little section? I'd rather go all the way around and come back and do the ear. Got it. Does that make sense? Yep. So it's like you could really plan it out. Okay, you're gonna do the ears, the legs, the inside of the arm. I can figure out which ones you're gonna do first and then come back and do the other ones. Sounds like a pain. And I want to stitch down his nose too. We'll see how it is because it's such a tight stitch. Or a tight little curve. So now we got around that one. So I'm going to come back in here and we're going to try it. I'm going to shorten this a little bit more to get around. So it's still the quilting applique stitch, still too wide. I might take it down. Let's take it down one. So 1 1.5 and 1.4 length. And mostly I, I want to try this because I'm doing a really tight little circle here coming around the muzzle. And I don't want the stitches to go super far into the muzzle. And nor do I want it to take big chunks out as I'm going around. Like I want to be able to kind of do this smoothly. Because I'm going to have to shift pretty frequently to get around this Like circle. every three stitches. <laughs> right, basically. Yeah. And that's when we have a kind of a stitch over. Like I said, that's where I want to turn, but if you do that, your blanket stitch doesn't look right. So what I want is to see everybody's when they're done. And you can, like I said, you can do this at embroidery machine as well if you have one, but this sewing machine makes it kind of fun because you get to do all of these different stitches. I'm going to come back around just past it and do a little lock stitch. All right. So you're going to pick one of these stitches and you're going to do it. All right. No, fra no Franken bears for you. No Franken bears for you. <laughs> so it looks pretty funny right now because my purple line is down here. So it looks like there's an extra row of stitching or something here. So this is going to look different when I'm done. We're going to pretend that I'm done the whole thing. Okay. And we're going to talk about doing the hand embroidery here. All right. So one of the things when I was trying the samples well, the other what, day, what aren't you done? What's, I what's didn't, do the, done? I didn't oh, do the okay. ears and the other leg. Do you oh, want me okay. to just do them? Yeah. Okay. I mean, we're here. Let's just do them. Okay. We'll do the whole head this style. How's that? So at least it's not too Frankenberry. Wait, I think it might have copyright infringement there. <laughs> I didn't mean to. It's it's not really morning and it's not really breakfast time. So no more no Frankenberries for you. No. Okay, so this is a, just a tiny little curve. So a smaller stitch is definitely better. And just take your time with it. And then if you have that little, the little button that lets you slow down, really do use it. Oh, <clears throat> that one right there. Yeah, the little buttons, they really are good. So even if you can sew fast, it's not always the best. It was somebody posted, uh, I saw this morning that said, you know, you don't, there's no prize. For, for finishing it first and there isn't in class and there isn't at home so 
take your time. Don't don't think there's a, a rush to it. With this project, did you change any of the other settings on your machine? Tension, pressure, nope. foot pressure? No, nope. no, I didn't. Um, I mean, if I were working on the Bernina, I would have changed the pressure, foot pressure because you always have to with the Bernina. Um, this one, I didn't have to change anything. The thread is um, still the um, Mettler polyester thread, 9014 stretch needle, all of that good stuff. It didn't really change anything with the with the presser foot pressure um, on here. And I would say like on the Bernina, you definitely have to, when you're working with cuddle just in general, when you're sewing the blanket together, if your machine wants to not feed it through quite as easily, you could definitely change it then. One of these times we might have to do that on the Bernina and I'll show you the difference. With this one, it's a little harder to adjust um, really because I never have to, so I don't do it. Uh, the, with the Bernina, I know how to. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna switch it back to my zigzag. Do you remember what we decided on? It was two and a half by two and a half at one point. But yeah, but now, then we but then switched I think it. it was maybe two and a half by one point. Four. I don't know. Let's I try. Don't, I don't remember. Let's see what happens. <laughs> that was that was years ago. I know. It feels like it was, wasn't it? That was, you know, numerous body parts before. I wonder if it says in the show notes. I don't have the show notes with me today. And I know I sent that information on. So it might be in there. There's lots of good information in the show notes about the products that we used and stitches and thread colors and all that good stuff. It was 1.6 before. So now we're doing it a little shorter. Thanks, yeah. everybody, for, you know, keeping, keeping us on. Keeping track. Of, yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> Somebody had to write it down while I was saying it. All right. So let's see what, if we can see a difference here. Okay. So here is the two. So you can see that this one is just a little bit, a little denser. Okay. So this was, this was the 1.6. That's the 1.4. So I can see a little bit of a difference. We'll see yeah, if I mean, we can pretty, tell. It's pretty minimal. I mean, it's yeah. 0.2 millimeters. Yeah. It's pretty minimal. <laughs> if we're going to be honest, it's 0.2 weak. millimeters. It's not a lot. Okay. So while we still have it here, we have to embroider on the eyes and the nose and the mouth. So I will say that I tried really hard. I love hand embroidery. I love hand sewing. I tried really hard to figure out a way to do this on my machine, and I could not control it well enough. The buttonhole stitch that there's like a circle is way too big for it. What I really need to do is the inside hole on that little buttonhole stitch. I couldn't find anything where I could create like a little circle. So I tried to zigzag, and I tried to just like, you know, adjust it myself to do it. Wouldn't work. So we're just going to hand stitch it. All right. So I gave up in that. And, uh, but I did have to buy new needles. So when I originally tried it, I will say I tried to use a pearl cotton and which I, cause it's already super thick in the pattern. They suggest three strands of cotton. I am suggesting three strands of cotton too. I'm just showing what I did wrong. Okay. So this was pearl cotton and I thought it would work pretty well. It didn't. I also like completely destroyed this needle. Oh, that's got a little bent. It's got, a, it's got a whole lot of bend to it. Yeah. And you said you were actually having a hard time pulling it through to the point where you needed to get like a pair of pliers that idea yeah i did i yeah. got my little pliers and i had to like rank it through and um it was yeah it was not an enjoyable experience and so i decided that we should do it differently so that's what we're doing today is a little differently so this one is my already threaded needle that is the tulip needle and this one i did use for one of them already so that one i used for one this one i used for one and this one oh sorry it doesn't really show but this one it doesn't didn't it bent just a tiny tiny little bit it looks like but you didn't oh, have to me. use the pliers on this one. I did not use the pliers at all. Of, it's Maybe wicked, it didn't. It's wicked though. shop. Is it, okay. wicked, is it wicked shop? I, yes. I was like, what are you saying? Yes. <laughs> yes, I guess it is. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and just put a little knot here. I will say, too, that I tried a couple of them putting uh, a stabilizer on the back for when I was stitching around because that's what I do with the embroidery machine. I thought maybe that's what I need. I don't. Okay. So you don't need to put a stabilizer on the back. It'll just be fabric which also made it difficult. So I just stuck a little knot, three strands of black embroidery floss, and I'm just going to come along in here, and then you can go ahead and just stitch it. Got it. Rin was also suggesting, and you mentioned this yesterday when we were talking, is that they do make a little silicone pad or whatever. Or yeah, like the, a, a, a thread, thimble. a needle puller. And I looked for one at the local quilt shop and couldn't find it. So I did, I did look. 
trying to put his little nose on. So three strands. Qu quilter's knot, French knot. I just did a knot. Just a knot, a knotty knot. It's just a knot in the back. Um, just to hold it in place. But a pretty substantial one. It's a knit fabric, you know. You right, know, exactly. Not, I did, it's yeah. got a little stretch to it, so you wouldn't want that knot to pull through. Right. Yeah, it's it's a hefty little knot right there. So, you know. Got it. That's what I did. Yeah, so we're just going to come along here, and I'm just going to stitch this kind of like a back stitch, I guess, for embroidery. But let me show you the packaging for this. So I did try a few needles that I have. And I bent, I bent one, one of them wouldn't even go through. And uh, so that's when I was like, okay, I have to go get new needles. So I went over to the local quilt shop and I got these needles, which I've seen lots of times and I haven't gotten them before. I got the number four and they are a nice length. They're very sharp and they work just fine doing this. Oh, by the way, this package, the packaging needle, is amazing. It's a monstrous package. It's not just one needle. No. It's all a little pack of needles. They come in these little glass jars. Uh, it's, that's really cool. It's lovely packaging. And the needles actually are really, really good. So They're um, made in Japan. They're made in Japan. We're, we're, we're where they make lots of sharp things. Synonymous with quality. That's yep. what I heard. So they make very good um, sewing needles there. And I'm really happy with that. So I'm just going to come along here. Try to come up the end the other side to make a car on itself to make his little smile so when i when i said that i did the stabilizer in the back that was the first one that i did too and it was um yeah not a lot of fun to try to stitch through the stabilizer and the two layers of fabric it was Got just it. a little bit too much so when you pulled that stabilizer out from under the muzzle it's making this a lot easier yes got it yeah and the stabilizer i used before was actually on the back too but i used one back here as well oh. so i was just stitching through a lot so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna um, cut my thread here i will say that this is the sort of like satin stitch area that we have to do for his nose i will recommend that you do this sort of thing where we're kind of going to go back and forth so I'm going to do this direction first just a little bit, and then I'll come back over his nose the other way. Come on, yeah. Oh, we're doing all right. Good. Um, and mostly because of the few things that I've tried, including we did those little lovey loves a few weeks ago, a month ago or something, where we had some satin stitching on that. Mm -hmm. And what I found is that the cuddle really does like to pop up through there. Oh, oh. got so it. So this is kind of like a knockdown stitch that you would do on an embroidery machine but just by hand. Sheila's going to tell me that she'd rather do it with the embroidery machine. Sure. <laughs> She's good at those knockdown stitches. So. Right. Yeah. But not everybody but, has but not the everybody has it. of owning an embroidery machine, exactly. so this is great for every, all the rest of us folks. Exactly. So this totally works. Um, ideally, you would want to stitch around this first and then come in and do the satin stitches. But what I found is that was actually like a lot of work. So you could totally do it. I did not, obviously. So you, you could do, do a little running stitch to outline it? Yeah, you do a little like a back stitch all the way around. Okay. Yeah, and that's exactly. It just outlines it. And it works really well. It just did take a lot of time. So now I'll start going back and forth. Okay, so the up and down on his nose with, with a little space in between them was basically like your knockdown stitch. That's the knockdown stitch. And now you're going to do the, the quote unquote satin stitch horizontally across his nose. Yep. So we'll do just a little bit of this because then I want to show you his eyeballs too. Oh, Karen Hayes says she does the um, the running stitch around the perimeter at the end, actually. Oh, that's a good idea. Might help kind of like it re just, redefine the outline. That's right? exactly, exactly. And it does work really nice. So I might have to try that. I also thought about trying to do it with the machine and just kind of hand cranking it around there first to get a nice little outline. So this is why, you know, you do a practice first. Okay, so you can see that the black gets hidden a little better because of the black or the 
the fabric underneath gets hidden a little better because of the black around the edges. I will tell you that it, I noticed that when I pull really hard, it's a problem too. So don't don't pull your stitches real tight. It starts to rip through the plastic and doesn't actually, I don't find it helpful. This is, I will say it is much easier to stitch when you're looking at it straight on and not upside down. I'm like, it's totally crooked now. It's okay. He's just a nose. Okay. So I'm going to go back and fix that later. But you can see how that's going to work, right? Okay. He's going to stitch his nose. Then I'm going to come to his eyeball. And I have to have a couple of hands for this one. Okay. Can you see it all right? All right. So then I just did a little French knot for his eyes. And I wrapped it, I think, six times. One. Okay. And then I'm going to stab it in another part. <laughs> it's terrible. I'm going to stab it in another part of his eyes, push the needle through a little bit, and get my French knot to work itself down. Hold it nice and tight. This is when I'm like, I still need the pliers. Wiggle it. I'm wiggling. You told me I can't use my teeth. No, there we go. Not only I did can't a yank. You, you, you shouldn't. I did no. a good yank. There we go. And then it pops through. All right. Okay. We'll try it one more time and see how it works the second time. Okay. I still have to lay it down. Sorry. Let me okay. rearrange. Okay. And I want to do it one, two, three, four, five, six. And I will say that if you don't count them the same both times, they end up different sizes. So things I've learned. This is this seems pretty small to like use another fabric like a felt or something, right? But I there mean, we go. Could you? Um, you could. Uh, you could also use little seed beads. Is that what they're called? I've heard of seed beads before. Yeah. Yeah. Might not be good for a little. I probably would stitch it on really well, and I wouldn't worry as much about that one because it's so tiny. But that's me personally. Um. Yeah, if you were doing, if you were giving this to a baby, you probably don't want to sew anything on, because it could come off. Got it. Yeah. All right. So there's his little eyes. We're gonna pretend his nose is finished, okay? Because I'm gonna take off the plastic. We can fix it later. Ready? Yeah. Okay. I'm like, are we ready? All right. So this is the water soluble stabilizer. It's plastic. It just comes right off. And then we're going to take my, oh, I didn't do his heart. So you would do his heart too. Okay. So here's a little heart. I always joke about this because I always forget the hearts. I always do. It's like been a problem since the first Kimber Bear I did. I'm like, sorry, nothing personal. Okay. Make sure you don't catch any of your stitches. And the smaller the stitches, the more this, or I mean, the bigger the stitch, the easier this comes out. But also you don't want to do it too big because then, you know, you're likely to rip your, rip your stitches. 90% of this is coming right out. Mm -hmm. Yep. The tinier the stitch. So you'll notice that on the embroidery one that I show you, I have to kind of pick it out a lot more because it's so tight that it holds down a lot of it. Um, but this works pretty well. And then you're going to kind of take it out of this little guy. And it's always funny because then you get a bunch of nap out of there. So this is where this little fun tool comes in. So this is a Kimberbell little tweezers. You can come in here and kind of grab these guys. Grab the glue and pull it out of here. This is where you get to get really fidgety about it if you want to. Okay? So you go ahead and pull that out. What happens is this, where it flicks out over it. Mm -hmm. I'll show you what I did with the other one in just a second. So I do find that this stiletto works super nicely for pulling out the, the stabilizer here. Because I can grab it a lot easier than I can with my fingers. Okay. Want to get these different stitches to show, so we can kind of compare, compare and contrast, see what we like, what we don't like. And I know a few people have talked about using a Q-tip with water on it to get this last little bits out. I have not tried that. I don't recommend 
using a bunch of water on it at all because it will get sticky. But if you just throw this in the wash, all of this little bit will come out. Okay, and none of the ink will transfer. So that's part of why we want to use that, like a, the friction pen or um, the water soluble stuff on there is because it's on here. And if this were Sharpie, it could transfer over to the front of the fabric and that would be bad. It came right out of his eyeballs there. That's great. I mean, even with him being a Franken bear, he is still ridiculously cute. <laughs> Every, everything's fine with his runny nose and everything. <laughs> his little crazy nose. I'll fix him. He'll be cute. Or I might not. I might just, you know, make a new one. But I do like being able to see how it works in different ways. I kind of, I like that I get to show you guys. So thanks for being here and, you know, playing along. All right, so there's some little bits that'll get stuck and I'll get fidgety with it because I don't like the stabilizer stuck in it. So definitely. That's like a personal choice thing. Like I'd rather sit here and pick it out than throw it in the wash, you know, to each their own, right? Okay. <laughs> so he is pretty cute. I will say he is pretty cute. The, I think that the French knots for the eyeballs are... The best i tried to do them as a satin stitch once and it was just pretty horrible so um, <laughs> <laughs> this it. is me being honest um so the the french knot is much much easier and if you saw how i do it you just twist it a bunch of times push it down hold it really nice and tight and pull it through and then it did when i was like pulling it it didn't want to come through and then i did a little and then it popped through so and nothing nothing broke so one of the things that i noticed is and i did it on this one so here is the embroidery version which does seem slightly larger um so that's interesting i never realized that before because i hadn't compared them side by side so just bigger um huh. yeah because i feel just like a little. just a little bit bigger um i'm going to do this measure of like maybe yeah yeah it's like yeah. a good half an inch bigger yeah. yeah so this one is a little bit bigger but one of the things that i did was this little thing that happens right here on this guy so look here this one here, this little the fuzz here drives me crazy. So I just trimmed it off, give him a little haircut, perfect. Now we have a little blue that shines through there that I could see he has a hole, but it's not covering it. <laughs> Got it. Okay, so that, that works perfectly fine. I do that all the time. I've done it on a few of them. Works out great, did it here. Then I also did here because it's a little tough, but you can see it's here as well. And if you if you pull this out of the the seam allowance, all of a sudden you're like, you've lost your edge, which, you know, it could bother you or it could not. One of the things that I realized is when I did this one, this is a frosted. So this now appears slightly darker. Oh, it does. Because I cut off the frosting. Got it. Yeah. So. Okay. So. So that was an interesting thing that I was like, oh, so the pink, what did I do with the pink? I don't know where the pink roll of fabric is. Um. It isn't frosted. So the pink, this would totally work. Yeah, there it is. So the pink would totally work because it's not a different color up here or it doesn't, it isn't as it's obvious. It's not tipped. Where right. here, it's really obvious that it's darker down at the bottom than it is up at the top. Got it. So just just saying like, give it a haircut. We say that a lot of times on different things. We'll be like, just give it a haircut. Um, and on certain times it will actually, you know, change the look of it a little bit because the haircut has cut off. This the is what happens if you don't, bother to do the inside of the arm super cute. yes still yeah. super cute right he's just, he's just a little chubby bear right he's a little chubbier because he doesn't have this little inside of the armpit Got exactly it. so you know there are things and, that happen. and no heart on that one also. and no heart because i forget them i just forget the heart okay <laughs> all right so let me show you a couple other ones so these were my first couple that i did and i did them on other fabric with other fabric just to see how they worked out um, these were the stitches that I tried, like a bigger stitch, and I didn't like it. These French knots turned out beautifully. And his nose is pretty okay, but I was having trouble with the um, the brown showing through. So his nose here is a little bit better. It's a little smaller. I didn't make it quite as big, but it's a much better nose. And that was with stitches going up and down and then sideways. I also accidentally did this one backwards and just eyeballed where his eyeball should go. That was not good. Oh, because I remember this, the beginning, you trace it backwards so that when you attach it to the wrong side right. of the fabric, 
So if you trace the wrong one, this is what you get, which for some reason isn't quite as cute. Um, And then one of the other things that you'll notice is that um, is that sometimes the nap will pop out like down there. So you can come back in and you can kind of fluff some back up, but you can absolutely go back in here and trim this up. Give him a little haircut right around the edge. Get that extra bits of fabric out, neaten him up. So if you didn't cut or didn't stitch quite as correctly, this huge, you could absolutely fix it. There's a huge um, breadth of detailing that you could or might or might not do. Exactly. Exactly. So it really just depends on how well you, you know, how much you want it to be like closer to perfect. Um, and I say that with like, it's not really how I sew. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, but sometimes I, that with but, crazy, crazy, crazy eyes. eyes. <laughs> but really what I'm trying what I want to show you is like, these are the things that will, can cause um, issues if you're not careful. But really, honestly, even though I did this one backward and his eyes are a little crazy, I think he's still cute and nobody's going to complain if they got him on a, on a, uh, a blanket. <laughs> nobody's going to care. So he can turn out super cute in all the ways, all the variations. Okay, let's look at these stitches really quick. I would like to hear what people, which stitch people like the best. I'm going to get rid of this a little bit. Okay, so this one we have the tight little zigzag down here. Okay, which is harder to see, truthfully, okay, which is kind of nice. So this little zigzag here, then we have the little bit bigger zigzag here. Here we have the decorative stitch. And then here we have the applique stitch. So I'd love to hear what you think is cutest, what you like best. Um, I can go ahead and I will put those stitch lengths on the Sew Together Tuesday Facebook page. So I do have some that are in the show notes already, but I'll go ahead and put these over there. And maybe I can take little pictures and show what each one is so that you can know in case you want to try it yourself. Again, I will reiterate, practice on something, okay? Even just some scrap fabric. So this is what I was talking about that I did with the interfacing behind it. Oh gosh, this is so when that was interfacing in the back and interfacing under the muzzle, and this no, is where the needles. Got yes, all but it was really needles. this. It was really a bad needle because you could see I I tore out the stabilizer here trying to get it to stitch through because I stitched this and this was awful. So I was like, I'll tear the stabilizer stabilizer out and do this, and it was still really difficult. Got it. Okay, so that was me just not using a good needle. So that was when I was like. I need to go buy a new needle. I need to find a good sharp needle. And then once I did, it just slid right through. Super easy to sew. You can see I wasn't struggling with it there at all, except to keep my line sort of straight because I'm sewing upside down. All right. Okay. So I those are that, all the that samples. That smaller there. zigzag seemed like the most forgiving, right? That was the one I that, that so was like the least amount of starting and stopping around corners. It and did. And that one, we'll say that one was two millimeter wide and 1.4 millimeter long. So start there if you like that one and then adjust it according to your machine. All right. I, um, I really do think that it's important to try out different things and see what works. And especially if you're making this for a gift, you're going to want it to be good. So give it a little run through on another one first. See how you can get all the steps in there. Okay. All right. So now once we have this, I want to show you how the blanket works. The blanket is the lullaby style blanket. So we did this one maybe a month ago. If you look for how to make a lullaby quilt without batting. That was the show that we did this on where basically you're going to take your backing. You're going to spray base your front on. You're going to sew your neck strip on. And then at this point, the blanket is going to be like this. And I'm going to go ahead and my strip is going to get sewn on here. I'm just going to do this, sew it on, flip it. Standard stitch okay. and flip. Standard. So if you watch the tutorial for the lullaby quilt, you'll see how to put that together because that's exactly what we did, except or, we did a different application. Or even last week's flag quilt. Or even last week's flag quilt. <laughs> we did it too. It's a very so, popular construction method. So, so you're gonna <laughs> so you'll do that little applique part. You'll put the strip onto your quilt. We start at the big the big side, work down. I didn't use a batting. If you wanted to use batting, you absolutely could. You just have to quilt it because we have to quilt the batting. If you don't use batting, you don't have to quilt it, okay? So that would make our blanket, all right? So that was the two parts for the blanket. Then you can make your little Kimber Bear. And do we have, 
the finished one so over here's there? the finished dude okay so here's the little kimber bear Boop. he's super cute this was a project that we did with kimber bell three and a half years ago or so um I think the first time that I demoed it was at uh, VDTA in like February of 2020. So it was a while ago. And uh, the way that they put it together in the uh, pattern is that you're going to, you're going to make each of the different sections. So you make a leg and a leg and an arm and arm, and you actually sew through the paper and create these little pieces that begin you stick into the holes, put them together. And the head is separate too. And right? the head is separate. The ears are separate. There's a whole tutorial on it that we did. Once I did it and I realized that like my least favorite part was trying to sew these parts on and make sure that they caught because you really do have to make sure that they catch. And I have a bunch of hand sewing too, it's, especially it's, the head. Yeah. And that was, and a hawk made one too. I forgot you did. Yeah, I'm, I, I get to talk about experience on this one. Yeah. And, and, I actually and, sewed the head on for that one because it's the head is sewing on is, is a little bit of a thing. So one of the things that I realized by the end of that tutorial was that we could actually make it as one full piece. So what I did, and you have enough of this in your fabric if you don't cut it out exactly right. This is such a great hack. Is that you just, I sew the pieces together because I'm lazy or I'm fast, efficient. I don't know. Uh, but I sew the pieces together. I put it in the shape that it's supposed to be, which is the shape here. Okay. This is a little bear. I make the pattern. These are your sewing lines. So I go ahead and I leave, traced it out. Leave a little turning hole. I left hole. a little turning hole. And then we're just going to turn this inside out. So I'm going to cut a little bit to see if we can do this. Because what I do, this, this is important, is when you come around here, you have to snip in to any of these corners. So any of these corners you're going to have to snip into. And you're like just leaving like a quarter of an inch. Or I'm leaving about a quarter inch. of an inch. Because honestly, when we do it a half an inch for cuddle things, it's really so that the two layers don't they, they don't have to stay together perfectly even that if they move just a little it's okay we have a lot of wiggle room we don't need all that wiggle room because it's already sewn together does that make sense we can uh -huh. actually have a very small little seam allowance and you are cutting one layer of fabric at a time this right. way so she yes. already cut the backing layer off or the back the back layer off yeah now she's cutting around it again so I will say that the only downfall, to, well, not the only, there's always, you know, pros and cons. I talk about this all the time. One of the cons of doing it this way is that I then have to sew the muzzle on by hand. Okay. So you might be able to figure out a way to do that, figure out where you want it placed on there, stitch it on there. I'm sure that you could. Like you would just have to lay it out, trace, you know, kind of trace around it on the other side, figure out where the muzzle is, sew it down, and then stick it together. For me, that's too... As much as I will, you know, spend 20 minutes picking out water-soluble stabilizer, that's too finicky for me. <laughs> so Everybody has to have their limits. We do. We have, you know, the things that we care about, the things that we're willing to do, things we're not. So this is one. So again, I'm using the little Karen K. Buckley's are just super nice and sharp coming around there. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clip in here again. Ink. Make sure it's clipped on the other side as well. So any of those little joints that I want them to bend. I'm going to go ahead and clip here just a little. Just make sure that it's going to come out around there. And we'll see how well this works. So around his ears, either side of his ears, lets it bend. Okay. All right. Ready? We'll try to turn this inside out. Yeah, that's what I need. Thank you. So I have a huge knitting needle. Thank you, Linda Lingner at So What's New and Yarn 2 in Long Island. She gave this to me last year, almost exactly a year ago, too, because we were there right before Memorial Day. That's true. Okay, now I can't find that other part of the hole. Come on, there we go. All right. So I will say that the long knitting needle is a fabulous idea, and I really appreciate it. When she first showed it to me, and I was like, oh, no, I've got turning tools. And in certain situations like this, it's really pretty ideal. So here comes his face around here. So this is like the uber-fast tutorial on how to make 
an easier Kimber Bear because I know a lot of people really love this pattern and then they just like, oh my gosh, it's all these little pieces. So this is kind of an easier way of doing it. And you end up going and sewing. I'm, I'm jumping ahead a little bit. You, yeah, go for you it. You sew over the joint line. Yep. After it's stuffed. Yep. And after the face and the muzzle and everything is on. Yep. That's and it exactly ends up right. looking just the same. Basically, it does. And, and it, it's its legs and arms flop the same way as they're supposed to. Yep. Not as hard. Not as hard. <laughs> so then you can make, you know, you could do them for a charity project. So, so let me show you with this one, see if I can get this to work. That other one worked really nicely. So just kind of get it to to start in there. Now, see, this one's not going to work now. There we go. Ta-da. Okay, so this big, long thing works really well to be able to push those out. And I can stick this little curvy one in there, kind of push these. Is, is Linda there today? Have you seen her? I haven't seen up? Linda Linger. I've seen okay. Lin Linda White, and okay. she said this is how she did her first one too. Okay. <laughs> some <laughs> so, some people just jump straight to the the, the easy way. Yeah. So I'm curious. <laughs> she would she would know what size needle this was. I'm not a knitter, so I'm like I don't know what. It's a big needle. That's what I know. It's a big needle. It's so about this, as big as a cooking chopstick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which I do have, and if you had your cooking chopsticks, those will work too. So this arm got a little stuck. So I'm gonna. I think it popped through the end. I can tell. There he is. Right. <laughs> there he is. All right. So now let me stick this one through there. So I get all these out. So now I have the whole body put together. Ta-da. Okay. So yeah, you would stuff it to here, stuff it to follow the instructions. Stuff these, stuff these, and then you just sew along this seam. <laughs> right here, right here, right here, right here. And now you have to hand stitch on the heart. You have to hand stitch on the muzzle. Yep. All that stuff. And yep. that's, that's a little trickier, but not impossible. But not and, impossible. And maybe you find it easier than doing all the other. Right. Because I definitely do. So, which is why I was like, it's the same pattern. I just put together a little different way. So it really is finding the way that works best for you, which is something we talk about here on Sew Together Tuesday all the time. Is let me show you 16 different options and you get to choose the one you like. Okay. So. Peggy <laughs> says she's going to make it now. Good. Whew. Good. I'm and, so and glad. And Jackie says, at least it's not the fox. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it's a super cute project. And putting the whole thing together is really fun. I will say of the two different projects, the Kimber Bear is much easier than the fox. We did the fox last year and it took a, a, an hour and a half to just to do the, the fox applique. It was uh, a little bit more intense, but it's really super cute. But also you have numerous different fabrics. So you end up having, I think you've, three different fabrics for that one. So this one is just one fabric that you smack down and do the little stitching around it. The fox has black and the ginger or rust and white. So it's a little bit more complicated. So if you're just starting out and you're wondering how to do it, I feel like this is a great project to start with because the Kimber Bear is easy, the applique is easy, and honestly, it's just the cutest dang thing. So um, it makes just a great, great project. So um, I really do recommend it. Also, you can do the cheater method for this guy. I will finish him up. I will post him over on the Sew Together Tuesday page and probably the I Love Cuddle page as well so you can see how he turns out. And we'll do a comparison, a side-by-side -side of the, you know, the correct way of putting it together and Teresa's hack. So um, follow us over on I Love Cuddle. We have lots and lots of things that we post over there and lots of great people. We're at, what, 22, 21 and just, a half? Just under 22,000. Just under 22,000 yeah. people there. So it's great. There's lots of projects that get posted and lots of different ideas that are shared, which I love seeing what people do with it. So with the cuddle fabric. So we definitely, we want you there if you're not there already. Okay. All right. I think that's it for today. Is there any other questions that I didn't tackle? No, I think we're good. I think that was it. Cause then I have the binding I might have strips. missed a couple back there, but it's okay. I'll go back and read the comments and I'll see what I can answer. All right. So thank you very much for joining us. We need a couple of winners. And then we'll announce those. All, All right. right. We have Katherine Johnson on YouTube and Wendy uh, Olhauser on Facebook. Very nice. So thank you. So Wendy and Catherine, if you could email us at info at shannonfabrics.com, send us your mailing address and your phone number, and we will get those kits out to you. You can make your own little Cuddle Buddies kit. It'll be super fun. And we'll expect you to like, send pictures. And, like, stuff. 
All right. So make sure you do that. We love we love seeing what you guys make. So thank you very much. We are not back next week, if I'm remembering right. Um, the calendar, because it's the beginning of the month. So right. June is the beginning of the first week of the month. Same time. So 10 o'clock um, on Facebook and YouTube is a special product preview. And we'll have, usually it's Julie, who's our general manager. We'll talk to you about fabric. And she talks to you about it in a totally different way. So if you've not had a chance to watch one of those yet, do. Because she is part of the whole design production process as the general manager. She knows all of that stuff. I can tell you how to sew with this stuff and what tools you might need. She can tell you all of the colors, how it's made, and give you inspiration on what you can do with the fabrics. So join them. They're the first week of every month at 10 o'clock Pacific on YouTube and Facebook. We're the rest of the week. Or, yeah, the rest of the week. So we'll be back in June. Now I don't remember what the date is. I want to say it's the 16th. It is not. It's the 20th. It's not. Is it, it's it's the, the, the second Tuesday. No, the second So the 20th would be the 10th. The 10th. Yeah. We'll be back June 10th. Um, so we're we'll back June right. 10th. We're actually going to make, going back to stuffed animals. So I'm really excited. We'll be having a two day um, that'll be very fun. And I am looking forward to doing that. What pattern no, is not that? Not 10th, 12th. I took 10 days off of 20th, 13th. Yeah. We don't even know. Math is really hard. Okay. <laughs> the second Tuesday of the month. So then we're doing, where are you going? Oh, there's a calendar. But, but it's no, still on May. But it's still in May. Of course it is. <laughs> So we'll be there we go, 13th, everybody's chiming in. Getting, I don't know why I took 10, 10 days off for the month, because I was like, no, that's, <laughs> that, that's the 20th. We do it on the 20th, 10 days before that. It's, that's not a week. I don't know. Oh, my God. <laughs> so the 13th there we go. and oh. 14th. Thank you. Yes. We will be doing the Rustic Horseshoe le Lounging Leaper? Lounging Le leaper. leaper. Lounging Leaper. Lounging Leaper. It's a little giraffe, and I'm super excited to do this one. So if you want to get started on that one, you need to get the pattern and the giraffe cuddle. Okay? And then you can join me for that one because that's going to be super fun. We'll post more on I Love Cuddles. Um, but you can join us for that. We also have a special guest next month, which is super exciting for a new product. And we'll be doing a patchwork pillow and some other projects that I can't remember right now. So we will figure it out, and we will be back two weeks from now. But join next week for Julie talking all about fabric and what you can do with it in another way. All right. Is that everything I'm supposed to say? That's it. <laughs> I feel like I must be really tired and it wasn't even that long of a show. But we're fine. Um, we I just got a couple of alerts that said that we got disconnected from Facebook accounts. So if you're on YouTube and you're still here, that's awesome. Thanks. If you can't hear me on Facebook, we'll fix it. Okay. Love you guys. All right. Bye. <laughs> Happy sewing. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha